Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship today. Uh, Before we begin, we have a couple of announcements. Uh, We we do still have some candles uh, that are unlit up here. Uh, If you'd like to light them later on in the service during our communion time uh, or after the service, we can also take some time to remember before God those saints who have come before us. Um, Announcements for this coming uh, few weeks. On Tuesday, uh, Our Saviors will be a polling station. Um, So we're going to have quite a bit of traffic coming through into the social hall. So if you see a lot of people, that's what's going on there. And we encourage you to exercise your right to vote. Get out and vote for, uh, vote your conscience. Um, We have Faith and Books coming up this Wednesday. Uh, We have a Thanksgiving service coming up at the end of the month, and we're changing it this year. We normally have it on Thanksgiving Eve, but this year we are having it on Sunday, November 20th at 7 p.m. So that's on Sunday before Thanksgiving at 7 p.m. So that'll be here. We'll have Christ the King worshiping with us as well, and afterwards we'll be having some pie We're still looking for people to provide pie. If you are able to, please contact uh, the church office and we can get you signed up for that. Uh, We also have a bread baking event coming up with Dr. Joan Krikova on November 17th. Um, We have a sign up out in the social hall out by the drinking fountain. Uh, There is limited space for that. uh, So please sign up when you can. Uh, It's just a fun skill to learn, fun thing to try, and also good time to get together with people and learn a new skill. Uh, And finally, we're looking for help with Advent crafts for our Advent festival. If you are available to help with with some Advent crafts, we do have a sign up out on the children's board out there uh, so you can help guide that. Pastor Kathy has something. Well, before we meet again, it will have been Veterans Day. Oh, thank you. And yes. so today on this Sunday, we give thanks. And if you're a veteran, if you could please stand, because we would like to thank you for your service. I have said many times, I am so thankful for veterans because I am in no way brave enough to do what you have done. So thank you for uh, for fighting for freedom. Thank you. Uh, I believe those are all of the announcements that we have. So let's take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. I invite you to stand as you're able and we'll join in our gathering hymn for all the saints.
one God who looks upon us with compassion, forgives our sin, and heals our lives. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. We'll take a moment for reflection. Have mercy, O God. Against you, you alone, we have sinned. In your compassion, cleanse us from our sin and take away our guilt. Create in us a new heart and give us a steadfast spirit. Do not cast us away, but fill us with your Holy Spirit and restore your joy within us. Amen. As tender as parent to child, so deep is God's compassion for you. As high as heaven is above the earth, so vast is God's love for you. As far as east is from west, so far God removes your sin from you, renewing your life through Jesus Christ. Blessed be God who crowns us with mercy and love. Blessed be God forever. Please be seated. O God of the Pilgrim's Way, we give thanks for these saints of the church who have been examples for us of God's love at work in the world. As we pray, we know that we are surrounded by this great rejoicing cloud of witnesses. Yet, even as we name these saints, we thank God for others whose, name, who, whose names we never knew or have forgotten, who showed us the meaning of life in Christ. We remember Kurt, Kurt, Kurt Oslison, Merle Oslison. Barbara Bauman. Carter Brandis. Velma Hale. Larry Hunstead. Richard Lane. Sharon Larson. Gloria Nelson. Lorraine Polzine. Tom Postel. Mary Rates. Wayne Schultz.
Jesse Steinberg. David Swenson. Conrad Trapp. Linda Trimnell. Dean Wegner. Paul Wilker. Holy God, we honor and celebrate the lives of those we have named, and we lift up many more names in our hearts. Just as your saints of old have followed you, we seek to do your will. Guide us. We desire to be your servants. Strengthen us. We long to know you clearly. Teach us. And in time, bring us to our eternal home of peace and joy. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We join in our hymn of praise. Let us pray together. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
The first reading for today is Psalm 149. We will read the psalm responsively. Alleluia, sing to the Lord a new song, God's praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their ruler. Let them praise their maker's name with dancing. Let them sing praise with tambourine and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in the people and adorns the poor with victory. Let the faithful rejoice in triumph. Let them sing for joy on their beds. Let the praises of God be in their throat and a two-edged sword in their hand. To wreak vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples. To bind their kings in chains and their nobles with litmus of iron. To inflict on them the judgment decreed. This is glory for all God's faithful ones. Hallelujah. The second reading for today is from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 11 to 23. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live in the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I praise that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Word of God, word of life. Please stand as you are able for the gospel acclamation. The Holy Gospel according to Luke chapter 6. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. 
And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. And I invite the kids up. And, you know, today we're going to come around the altar. And Gavin, maybe you can bring your cousin right up here. So we're going to come up here, around, oh, I mean around the baptismal font, but I'm going to have you come on this side so no one is by these candles. So come over here, come over here on this side. Everybody come on up here, stay away from the candles. And those of you behind them, make sure you're watching the candles, thank you. Okay, great. Well, I am so glad you're here today. Today is this special day we call All Saints Day. And I'm gathering here at the, at the baptismal font because I want to remind you of something. I've told you this before, and so has Pastor Dave. I want to remind you that when you were baptized, God said to you, I love you. God said to you, you are my child, and you are my child forever. And God said, there is nothing you can do to make me love you even one bit more. And there's nothing you can do to make me love you one bit less. See, God loves us. God knows we'll sin and we'll make mistakes and we'll be selfish and we'll push our brothers and sisters sometimes. And God says, I love you anyway and I forgive you. And do you know what that means? That means we're saints because saints are all the forgiven children of God. And so we are sinners because we still do things that are selfish. But Jesus, God said, we're forgiven, so that means we're also saints. How many of you think of yourself as a saint? A few people are saints. We'll talk to the parents. No, um, we are all saints. You're exactly right. We're saints because we are forgiven child of God, children of God. That is an amazing gift given to us at our baptisms. And so on All Saints Day, it's a good day to remember our baptisms and remember how much God loves us and forgives us and says, we are saints of God. And saints of God can go out and bless others. Do to others as we would have them do to us. So today, we're all going to dip our finger in this baptismal waters and we're going to remember we are saints of God. So let's dip our fingers in there. Everybody, come on up, and if you need help, come on closer. Squeeze in. My sister hasn't been baptized. Yeah, well, I think she will get baptized. And you know what? God loves her. God loves her right now. Okay. Who hasn't gotten their finger in the water, dipped in the water yet? Okay, let's see. Is that Theo back there? Come here, Theo. Theo, right over here. Dip your finger in. Who else? Who else over here? Right over here, you can put your finger in there. But now we're not done yet. And after you stick your finger in there, you have to say like this, I am a saint of God. Can you all say that with me? I am a saint of God. That's wonderful. So let's have a prayer together. One more over here. Let's, let's remind her, you are a saint of God. Okay, let's have a prayer together. Dear Lord, Thank you for loving us. Thank you for forgiving us. Thank you for making us saints. Help us to go out and bless others. Amen. You may be seated. Thanks for coming up today. Be careful around the candles. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So today is a day where we look back and we look ahead. We look back and we give thanks for for the saints that we have remembered this morning, the saints of our saviors. We give thanks to and look back and remember the saints in our own lives and we thank God for them. And we give thanks, too, for those original followers of Jesus, the disciples and apostles 
who first followed Jesus, we give thanks for them. We give thanks for all of the people who shaped our faith. We give thanks for the people who built this church, all saints of God. But then we look forward, too, to our role in loving and blessing our neighbors and building up the body of, the body of Christ. So we probably all have our own idea of what it means to be blessed. We may not always use the word blessed, but we say things like, oh, look at them, look at how successful they are. Or look there, oh, they have such a great life. Oh, look at their family, how lucky are they? All their kids are healthy and doing well. Or we say, oh, look at their grandchildren, how perfect. The thing is, even though we don't use that word blessed sometimes, Blessed can also mean happy or fortunate or well-off. So yes, I think all of us would say the people I mentioned are fortunate and well-off. They're blessed. But my guess is most of us would usually not say, blessed are those who are poor. Blessed are those who are hungry, who are weeping, who are reviled or excluded. In our world, when we think of someone who is blessed, we generally think of a person who maybe, hey, maybe they won the Powerball, or they're wealthy, or they're beautiful, or we look at them and we just think, oh, they've made it. Blessing in the eyes of this world is usually based on material things, or who from the outside, we think they have it all together in their family, or their work, or in their life. But Jesus is teaching us something different. So maybe the better question instead of, you know, what is a blessing is, what does being blessed feel like? You know, what does it feel like when you're blessed? And maybe this helps us get at the promise Jesus gives in the Beatitudes. So what does it feel like to be blessed? I think it feels like you're not alone. I think it feels like you're respected and that you matter. So when a couple gets engaged, for instance, and a parent says, you have my blessing, the couple knows that they're not going to be in this marriage alone, that their parents approve and respect them and their decision. I think being blessed feels like even if you've messed up, I mean you've really messed up, you have someone on your side, and you're allowed to rise above your mistake. I think being blessed feels like you have worth. And so I think a funeral, or today on All Saints Day, we are saying that each of these lives really mattered, that their light loss is felt, that whether there was 10 people at their funeral or hundreds, that their life had value, that their life blessed other lives. Being blessed also feels like hearing that whether the world sees you as a success or as someone who has really fallen short, God sees you and loves you and enters into your life to bless you. Being blessed feels like I'm part of something larger than just myself. Being blessed feels like a gift. So hear this and feel this blessing from Jesus. Blessed are you. And then wherever you are today, I hope that hearing that gives you hope. Hope to look ahead and think that the hope of this world isn't for the same old thing to continue. It isn't for all of us to somehow become elite and wealthy and to never have to worry about illness or loss. We know that's not possible. The hope for God's world is that we trust and we lean into God's future together. We lean into this, what Jesus taught us today, is to love our enemies, to do good, as to do to others as we ha would have them do to us. We lean into that. That's the kind of future God wants. That's the sermon Jesus delivers today. But right now, today, Jesus says to all of you saints that 
you are blessed. So what blessing feels like is one question. And then I think maybe the next would be, well, why did Jesus bless these people? The poor, those who weep, those who are reviled, and all the other people he mentioned. Is Jesus saying that these are the only people who get blessed? That only the hungry and poor are blessed? Or that you are only blessed if you're weeping? I don't think so. Jesus isn't setting up conditions or terms for blessing or trying to make the hungry, hungry feel like, oh, well, you're blessed, so your hunger doesn't matter. It's not what Jesus is saying. I think Jesus is saying, rather, that his blessing is for all people, all kinds of people, all kinds of down and out and extremely vulnerable and the people at the very bottom of the ladder. And I think Jesus is telling us that because he wants us to know that God regularly shows up in mercy and blessing just where we least expect God to be, with the poor, the hungry, the weeping, and those being reviled. See, this isn't where citizens of the ancient world would have looked for God. And I don't think that's really where we normally look for God either. But Jesus says, if I'm showing up here with the weeping and the hungry, and the lost, the vulnerable, then Jesus is saying God will be everywhere, showering all creation with his blessings. You see, we're used to having to earn what we receive, aren't we? And somehow then, if we're not one of the elites, well, we've fallen short. And we're used to having to pay for our mistakes. But Jesus is saying that today, in all of your weakness, blessed are you. Wherever you are today, Jesus says, I have come to you to be with you. So blessed are you who are reeling from bad news in your family or your work. Blessed are you who are battling cancer or another illness or you have a loved one battling illness. Blessed are you who are living with the consequences of really bad decisions. Blessed are you who are grieving. Blessed are you who think that you aren't good enough, who believe that you've made way too many mistakes, and so you are not worthy to receive God's blessing. For wherever it is, however it is for you today, God enters and promises to be with you, to walk with you, and to bless you. I mean, sometimes I think a lot of us already know this, that when we're at our lowest, when we're poor, when we're suffering, when we're hungry, when we're grieving, when we, those are the times when we really open ourselves to God's presence and recognize that true blessing isn't the material blessings of the world, what the world values. True blessing is something different. And then we are blessed. Jesus, God gives us without asking and then blesses us that we might be a blessing to others. So just recently, someone shared with me they were a child during the Depression. And they were talking about what it was like to live in the Depression. And my mom said something very similar to me. We were really happy in those years. We didn't have anything. We were just scraping by. But we were happy because they were together, because they worked together, they celebrated together. They didn't have much to celebrate with, but they celebrated. You see, sometimes in our difficult times, it's like then where we really catch a glimpse of what God's blessing is about, and it's not about stuff. It's about being together. It's about being the body of Christ together, where we find the most blessing and walking together through the trials and tribulations of this world. Jesus not only is giving us words of blessing for our own lives, but we need it, don't we? But he is teaching us to see others, those we least expect, as being blessed. So we're called to see the broken, the lonely, the grieving, the downhearted, and all those the world rejects as blessed too. So what if we saw others? What if we saw the people that the world truly rejects as blessed rather than as people to be pitied or people to be to ignore or people
people to give up on. What if we drew near to the grieving and the ill instead of turning away because we're so scared we won't say the right thing? Would we not then enter into their lives as brothers and sisters in Christ, willing to help them in their needs? And wouldn't we then open our hearts and see the blessing they are and how they've been blessed and see the privilege we have of walking with them? Maybe that's what true blessing is, drawing together inside our community, inside this community of faith and outside these doors, seeing all people as God's beloved children, meeting each other in all the various conditions of our brokenness and letting one another know that we and God hold you in high regard. Let people know that we will be present for you. We will walk with you. And above all, we are going to see you as a person of great worth. For that is just what Jesus has taught us today. God uses us to bring God's blessing to others in both our words and actions. And doesn't our world really need that blessing? I mean, there's so much anger, there's fear and hate, there's so much loneliness and brokenness. We need to share God's blessing. And then, don't we all need God's blessing? Because each of us carries today our own brokenness and what's weighing our hearts down. God can use each of us to bless others. That's what each of these saints has done right here. They've blessed others. See, we're so easy to make a list of the things we're not good at the things that we didn't do or the things we really could have done better, the places where we really messed up. And yes, all of that's probably true. We could all do better, couldn't we? But still, God is using us, ordinary saints. God is using ordinary saints like you and I to bless others. And we do that by doing to others as you would have them do to you, the last words in today's gospel that Jesus spoke. So, You know, I've just been waiting to get this into one of my sermons, but I watched Queen Elizabeth's funeral earlier this fall. You know, I'm one of those people that got up at 3.30 in the morning to see all of the pomp and circumstance. But here's the thing I really noticed about that funeral. Now, she was one of the most famous women in the world, wealthiest women in the world. She had the opportunity to affect lives in ways that none of us can do. But at her funeral service, Despite all of that grand pomp and circumstance, it was just like our funerals right here. They were giving thanks to God for all the promises given to her and to all of us at our baptism. They were speaking God's words of forgiveness. They were hearing God's promises that God will be there for us throughout our lives. And then God gives each of us eternal life. Yeah, we're, we don't get, have the effect that some people who are maybe more famous and have more money do, but we ordinary saints make a difference in our daily lives, and we only have to look at these candles and these candles to recognize that, that as ordinary saints were sent out to do to others as God, or as we would wish them to do to us. So today, we look back. And we give thanks for all the saints who have come before us. But we look ahead too. We gather today to open our hearts to see how God is leading us to be a blessing to others. To share God's blessing and God's unconditional love with others. We gather today to ask for God's guidance. To build a world where we are blessed by and are a blessing to the hungry, the weeping, the excluded, the hurt, and the reviled. We who are ordinary saints gather to be fed by God's word, to be nourished in this meal at the altar, and then to go out and do to others as we would have them do to us. We, the saints of God, ordinary saints though we are, we trust in God's blessing for us each and every day, 
and we trust in a blessing that gives us hope, hope for this world and hope for eternal life. Amen. We sing our hymn of the day, Death Be Never Last. Please stand as you are able. Let us join in confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. United with your saints across time and place, we pray for our shared world. God of blessing, open us up to see the blessings you offer us. Make us see the blessings and guide us in our sharing of those blessings. Jesus taught us how to serve, and we pray that we take that to heart. May your grace be our guide your hope be our message, and sharing your blessing with others be our mission. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of truth, raise up leaders with integrity, honesty, and compassion. Unite our elected officials in sharing goals that benefit and serve all people. Instill in them hearts of justice, mercy, and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of tenderness, we give thanks for all who have died in the faith. Console our mourning spirits with the promise of eternal life in your presence. Let us live in the light of the saints who are constantly pointing us toward you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of tumult, 
you sustain and guide your people when the way forward is uncertain. Abide with all going through transitions at work, school, or in their personal lives. Bring healing to those who are sick, especially Rich, Bob, Audrey, Russ, Dixie, Joan, Brad, Sharon, Mike, Joyce, Ken, Mavis, Anne, Dave, George, Carol, Vern, Pam, Sharon, Marion, Ted, Katie, and those that we lift up now out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Accept these prayers, gracious God, and those known only to you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Oh, never mind, don't sit down yet. We're sharing peace. I want you to turn to those around you and share a sign of Christ's peace. Peace, everybody. Peace. Please stand as they bring the offering and the bread and wine forward.
Let us pray together. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours and your faithfulness is sure. Word and water, wine and bread, these are signs of your abundant grace. Receive the gifts we bring and nourish us to proclaim your abiding love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of pot and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Christ spreads a table before you. Gather here with all the saints. You may be seated.
Please stand for the communion blessing and prayer. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, most gracious God, that you have fed us with the bread of heaven and given us a foretaste of paradise. Enliven us to be your body in the world and to serve those who are in need. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> and receive the benediction. May the God of peace who creates all things and calls them good, who makes us alive in Jesus and who breathes on us the spirit of hope, bless you now and forever. Amen. We sing our sending hymn, Blessed Assurance.
go in peace to love and serve the Lord.